Um, something you might know if you are out on the Oregon coast area, but you might not know. Everything I say in the next minute of this video is almost completely irrelevant to Seaside. And that is the beautiful thing about doing research after you visit a location. Watch and learn. Is that sand is somewhat a temporary feature and so are rocks on the coast during the year. During the winter months, the storm, stormy weather comes through and actually pulls a lot of the sand off of the beaches, making uh, many of them rockier beaches in the winter time. But the nice thing is when you find cliffs like that, frequently they have rubble piles at the bottoms of the cliffs that are fairly reliable. So we'll see what we find at this one. Hi everyone. Today I am out at Seaside and we are trying to find rocks. And the problem with trying to find rocks at Seaside is it's all sand. So I'm going to try and use what I know about finding rocks to find rocks. And that is that, see that landmass over there? That is a good place to hopefully find rocks that fall down from the cliff sides and gather up on the beaches, meaning there's a little bit more material than out of these flat areas that fill up with sand. So we're gonna head down there and see if we find um, rocks piled up and if any of it is good material for lapidary use. There's an inlet to a thick sandy estuary, the Nakatakum River, and then about six and a half miles of sandy beach north of us. So we aren't going that direction. We're going south today, and it looks like we have a ways to go to get to our destination regardless. So let's talk about Seaside. The cliffs at Seaside share a lot of the same geological history as the cliffs at Oceanside, which we did a video on about two and a half months ago. This is true of many of the coastal cliffs in Northwest Oregon. Despite this, every cliff I go to on the Oregon coast has its own flavor of rocks and sedimentary patterns. But let's talk about some things that make Seaside different. Out along the vast stretches of sandy beach, the sedimentary layers of Seaside can go down an incredible 150 feet in some areas. This means you will never glimpse bedrock at this beach. With a sedimentary depth that thick, it's going to be pretty hard to find volcanic silicate rock materials on most of the seaside beach. In fact, geologists expect that the creek gravels laid down in this area from the coastal plain that used to be here roughly 7,000 years ago would be about 125 feet below sea level. The rocks we would be out here trying to find are buried many stories beneath our feet. So with that knowledge, I can count on finding almost no rocky debris on the sandy sections of Seaside. So where do I go to find the rocks? Do you see those cliffs down there? That is the Tillamook Head, and my best bet for finding rocks at Seaside. If we can make it down there, I can almost guarantee we're going to find rocks. I can't guarantee how good they will be for rock hounding, but we will find rocks. Those are definitely rocks. but I think I would take that home just to play with, see what happens. <laughs> okay, things that have caught my eye. You found the other one I, that caught my eye. So is this. I'm gonna try and get this, some good visuals on that one. Lots of little tiny spots and a soft matrix. 
but that would be kind of interesting to take a cross cut on. And I think I found a Jasper, or at least a very nice red light. That is pretty cool. That one would be fun to take home with cut. So it pays sometimes when you're looking around and you find a rock you really like like this, but it's all cracked up to look around because you might find the other piece. Ta-da! This one might be kind of fun. You can tell spots are kind of going through with the material, so it might be kind of fun on a slab, even though it's a bit of a softer material. What is going on here? Wow. Nothing on that side, it's just all on this side. I'm kind of curious. That's how it do. Neat. So we're mostly finding soft stones today, but this one kind of caught my eye and I thought it might be kind of fun to see a cross section of. So this one might be pretty in a good way. Let's talk about when these rocks got deposited. Besides light erosion from the cliffs, in the 1980s, there was actually a massive landslide at the north end of the Tillamook Head, and it deposited most of these large boulders we see today. Much of these basalts that we find here were formed 15 to 17 million years ago during the Columbia River basaltic flows that also formed Oceanside. These long-ranging lava flows combined with sedimentary layers like tuft and sandstone and the sea pillow lava formations from 50 to 60 million years ago. Unfortunately for rock hounds interested in jaspers, opals, and rhyolites for cutting and polishing, this combination of formations seems to be much more sparse in those high silicate materials. But there are some pieces to be found. It's no surprise that the area would attract people, and it has for a very long time. Shell middens, or debris piles from human clamming, have been found inland, suggesting that the seas used to extend into the headland by almost a mile to form a sheltered bay. The oldest history unearthed so far at Seaside is 2,000 years old, but people have almost certainly been in the area for much, much longer. This area has an incredible amount of relatively modern geological activity, almost entirely driven by erosion and we may get to see some of its coming changes in our lifetimes. I think that's it for today. I found enough rocks. Uh, my backpack is pretty full of healing. So we're gonna head out. I'm gonna try and take some of them. Even though they weren't the shiniest rocks, most of them feel a little bit more on the chert end. I'll take some of them and put them through the saw and we'll see some of the results. All right, these are the rocks that I picked up at the seaside cliffs. And while the hull is definitely not as jaspery or agaty as I was kind of hoping, um, there's still some interesting things here. I'm going to go ahead and get them wet. I would like to go ahead and pull about five of these out for our cutting and then just have to pick which ones that will be. This is a bit interesting. It's a maybe. This might be an experiment for another day. I'm not really feeling that one. I'm not really feeling this one either. Or this one. This is kind of interesting. And this is a pretty interesting one. So this one right here has some green, almost rhyolite looking inclusions in it. So that might be a fun one to cut. I don't know, maybe, maybe. Skip that one. Skip. Okay, this one's kind of interesting. I think it's got like a green quartzy or agaty ball inside of it. I do also really like this one. And these are just smaller chunks of one of the other ones I've already pulled out. This one might be kind of interesting though. So let's see, this is probably too many. 
we'll skip this one. And, oh, I don't know. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, whatever, we'll do seven. I would say this was a tough hunt. I, I didn't feel like I had a good grasp on what I was looking for here, so I'll be very curious to see how some of these rocks turn out. Just go ahead and wet these down. Um, I also had to hunt the beds dry while I was there. There was no easy way down to the water, and I did not bring a spray bottle. I should really start doing that. Um, <laughs> So this material has a little bit of what I think might be agate coming through, and it seems to be green in color. Yeah. Oddball, and it seems to be a decently large chunk. So I'm kind of curious about that one, if we get a cut through it. Yeah. We're just gonna have to cut through it and see what happens. For sure. Oh man, should we even cut this rock? I mean, I don't think so personally. Yeah, like I'm it. kind of, I'm kind of team now not cutting this rock. It's just really pretty. It is gorgeous. It's well tumbled. I'm going to actually go ahead and pull this one out of the batch for this round. Woohoo! Sometimes you just shouldn't cut a rock and this is one of those rocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is like what I believe to be a rhyolite. Um, all these little black dots popping through it. I'm very curious to see how that ends up looking if we get a nice flat edge. This is another rhyolite with green speckled throughout, but not quite like the rhyolite we saw at Oceanside. A little bit different. Every beach has its own formula, would you say? They kind of have their they kind of have their own their own thing. Sediment. And then we have this thing. I just thought, you know, I see some patterns kind of coming out of the surface. Let's spray it again. It might end up like that other one we just cut open. It could end up like that other one just popping apart, but I'm kind of curious to see if we get some nice dotting all the way through. Mm -hmm. I kind of hope so. And then there's this guy. Um, I can't tell if another rock hound had found this one first. It's definitely not the hardest material and I might've left it behind because of that, mm -hmm. but I freaking love all of this brecciated um, spider webby spider webby texture going through it and I really want to see what that ends up looking like flat so let's go so with this guy I think I'm just gonna kind of come in this way and shave off this edge and see what it ends up looking like for this one I think I'm gonna go ahead and just get as much detail as possible right down the center with this one I just want to get as much detail from this green as possible and I think this might be the right angle to do that at I'm just going to slice off the edge on this one and see what happens. Uh, with this rhyolite, we're going to just go right down the center. With this rhyolite, we're going to go right down the center, like so. All right.
Okay, so obviously we chose not to cut this one. We're still feeling pretty darn good about that. Sometimes a rock is just meant to be what it is. A rock. A rock. Alrighty, so which one first? You know which one. We're gonna do this one. <laughs> because we, it kind of slipped open us a little bit on us. So yeah, here we go. All right, reveal. Speckly. Let me give that a little rinse off. I want to see how, how strong the boys are. Cool. That is actually really cool. I don't know if you can get a really good close up on that, but like there's a little bit of um, rhyolitic line, like, you know, outlining on some of those. This yeah, is I'll really nice. i get a picture of it later. Really nice piece. I love it. Small. Small one, this guy. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <gasps> nice. That is pretty sweet. It's like a teensy tiny thunder egg. Or a pond. Yeah. <laughs> Very clear too. Typical Chalcedony. I'm curious though, because the green doesn't really show up at all. Mm -hmm. It does the here. Top layer thing. Yeah, and we got a little bit of a flow channel right here, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice piece. Itty bitty thunder eggs. This one. All right. This is a nice little sport. Oh, <gasps> shush. That's amazing. Very pretty. I was not expecting that at all. What the heck? I am going to be opening so many more soft stones after this. Like, look at that. That is incredible. Oh, Very cool. What the heck? It's like an alien landscape. Mm hmm And this one is, like, even better. Definitely something I could see in Star Trek. Oh, my God. I love that stone. <laughs> and I was thinking that one was going to be the one, and I was like, nah. Well, happens. you guys have a lot to live up to now. See, when this rebel says shush, she means the rock is telling her to shush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh, cool. Nice it's green subtle, sparkles. but it's pretty. Yeah. Nothing nice. wrong with subtle. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll give it a little squirt so it's nice and clean. Here we go. Ah. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Ooh, it's very, it's got a smoothness too. That's, that's a harder material. Mm -hmm. Neat. I'm actually impressed with this beach so far. Mm -hmm. Like for the cuts, it's been good. Yeah. All right, last one. Here we go. Oh, oh my that's really god. Cool. I knew this one had a good chance of being really cool, but like, I'm shocked. The little gray setups. That's just crazy looking. Very similar to this rock in style. The, I really hope those ones polish up well. They're just amazing looking. These all came out very nice. Yeah. Honestly, so, I like them um, all. Seaside Cliffs uh, winner. <laughs> It took some time and it, it was not as intuitive as other rock hounding, but um, wow. Look at those. Like, those are some of my best cuts. <laughs> and I did not think I was going to be getting those off of the seaside lips. And it, these ones specifically, um, the color and just how these patterns go flow and everything just kind of remind me of like the old Renaissance type pictures. I think it's Renaissance era. Don't quote me on like that. Like the Grecian gods. Yeah, and, Grecian yeah. gods and stuff. <laughs> cool. That is Seaside. Don't forget our friendly little guy that we didn't even want to open. 